Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be taking a look once again at these two Dell laptops that I uh, first took a look at in my last video. And in that video if you saw it uh, I ended up actually acquiring two Dell Inspiron laptops that I have right here as well as a MacBook Pro from 2011. And we're going to be taking a look at the MacBook Pro later. I still want to actually open that thing up and see what that loose part is. But today we're going to actually be wiping the data off of the these two machines and reinstalling Windows XP and we're gonna do this in a little bit of an unorthodox way in that we're gonna actually be using two separate versions of Windows XP one that is official on this computer on the left here and an unofficial version on the right and we're going to be using this Dell uh, official CD here which will uh, put Windows XP service pack 1a on this computer right here and on the one on the left we're going to be using a cd with windows xp vienna edition just because that i, I uh, you know had this cd uh lying around i i didn't really choose this version for any sp specific reason it's just based off of xp and i did a whole video covering windows xp vienna but in a nutshell what it does is it uh, gives windows xp a more vista-esque uh look to it which is pretty cool and um, so I actually got a comment from one of you guys asking me if I was going to put uh, Vista or put something newer than XP on it. And I think for now, I'm just going to stick with uh, a Windows XP based OS on both of these. Just because of the uh, hardware, I mean, Windows Vista can run on like 512 megs of RAM. These have one gig, but I don't really want to push the machine too much. And plus, I'm not really going to be using it or uh, using these machines for really anything, you know, high power. So I just decided for now we can keep it on, on uh, XP, although I may decide to uh, upgrade one of these machines to Vista or maybe even Windows 7 down the road. So uh, without any further ado, let's just get started. I'm going to go ahead and plug in both of these uh, machines to the wall. And we're going to basically be uh, installing both of these uh, OS's on these machines uh, simultaneously and kind of see which one finishes faster. All right, so we are back and you can see that I have, I mean, you can't really see the one on the left here, but I do have both of the uh, machines in the BIOS setup and we're going to be um, putting both of these disks into the drive. We'll go ahead and do that. Now, hopefully these drives work. I haven't tested them. Uh, if they don't work, we're gonna have some issues obviously both of these are actually set well they're both set to the year 2007 but the one on the left here is set to june 13th the one on the right is uh, april 2nd so that's kind of interesting i'll go ahead and move this one over here i kind of want you to be able to see both of these at the same time so i think that should be pretty good i mean it, it's not really like a race or anything like that but one of these and a couple of you guys actually pointed it out one of them was slower booting up than the other one i think that was this one on the right here i've uh, kind of you know swapped places but just go back to the other video and whichever computer has this thing on it here um i, I think this one was the faster one but i'm not 100 percent sure of that but i mean we're gonna find out uh, so we're going to go ahead and just exit out of setup here. Actually, before we do that, I want to make sure, let's go down to um, boot sequence, and we're going to make sure, we're going to go into enter here, we're going to go to CW drive, move that all the way to the top, and we'll press enter, and we'll do the same thing over here. We'll go down to boot sequence, and I don't know why they always put the... DVD drive at the very bottom. So there we go. We'll press escape. And on both of these, we will save and exit. So now they're both booting back up. And they should automatically boot into uh, the Windows installation. So we're going to press any key to boot from CD. Press any key to boot from CD. And for the first uh, portion of this setup here, it's going to be uh, very, I mean, it's, it's going to pretty much be identical for both of these. Um, this one is going to be installing XP Home Edition, the one on the left here. Well, you can't really see what I'm pointing at. This one here is installing the um, regular vanilla XP Home Edition. And the one on the right is installing a Vienna Edition, which I believe is based on XP Professional, but I'm not, I, I don't remember which exact version it's based off of but we will figure that out obviously once we boot into it and i'm going to go ahead and turn on manual focus now so you guys don't have to deal with the annoying strobing effect that this will do when uh 
when it you know like when the screen goes black or when it goes out of focus which i've had people point out you know why don't you put it into manual focus but sometimes i just forget because the camera is it just always goes into autofocus so it's windows xp professional is what um xp vienna is based on and the xp vienna install is a lot more automated you see that we already have skipped past like the license agreement and all that stuff and uh, XP Home Edition over here, the you know uh, vanilla install is actually going to go and ask us to press enter and to agree to the license agreement, and all that stuff. So we're going to press F8. It's going to be so hard to reach over to this one here. So on the one on the left here, it's asking us if we want to repair XP Home Edition that's already on this. We're going to say escape because we don't want to repair it. So you may notice that the machine on the right here has like four different partitions, and I'm actually. Uh, I actually never looked at my computer on this machine, so I didn't see that there was, there's this uh, media direct partition, but there's two uh, that, that are FAT32 and, or, and one that's FAT and one that's NTFS. So we're just gonna wipe everything out on both of these. We're just gonna delete partition. We're going to press enter because we just want, you know, a blank unpartitioned space. And we're gonna delete here, L. We're going to scroll down, delete, L. Um, or enter L and then delete enter L delete L okay so we've got unpartitioned space on both these both of the hard drives are the same size so that's awesome we're going to press enter we're just going to do a quick format on both of these but yeah I'm sure that you guys have seen this whole installation process many times before I know that I've done at least two videos on XP Vienna so you guys already know what this is all about but uh, I just had a couple of people, you know, comment saying, hey, go ahead and do that dedicated video that you mentioned about formatting. And I said, yeah, you know, why not? So that's that, that's basically uh, what that we're doing here today is just to, sh you know, show you guys what goes into formatting these two laptops, if you didn't know. Um, but we're just going to go ahead and let these two machines uh, copy the files over to the hard drive. The one on the right is actually going much faster, it seems. The one on the left here is stuck at uh, driver.cab still. But I will uh, see you guys once we're at the next phase of the setup. All right, welcome back. So we've made some progress. The machine on the left here is actually fully done with the first phase of the setup. Let me actually see. Okay, so we're good on the camera. I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't cutting off anything on the left here. But, uh, yeah, the machine on the left has finished copying everything over to the hard drive, which is the vanilla Windows XP Home Edition. So, naturally, this machine essentially does have less files to copy than this one does, since this one does have all of those custom themes and the wallpapers and all that kind of stuff. So, the one on the right is probably going to take a little bit longer. It's at 88% um, copying, you know, it's still uh, copying files over to the hard drive. Um, but, we're going to... Uh, get into this phase here right before the out-of-box experience where, where we actually are asked to enter all of our personal info uh, So hopefully this will not take 39 minutes, but it might because again, this is a uh, period specific hardware This laptop is from the Windows XP era uh, So it may definitely take 39 minutes, but I'm not I'm, I'm just hoping that it doesn't but we, we will see um, looks like we're at 97% on the uh, Vienna machine. I I'm just going to call the one on the left the vanilla machine and the one on the right the Vienna machine. All right, so you see we've got that Vista uh, boot screen there, which is actually kind of cool that uh, XP Vienna does that for us. It basically gives us the Vista boot screen for the first time. I mean, we haven't even installed the whole thing yet, and it has like the Vista boot screen already, which is which is pretty nice. Uh, we're at 35 minutes on the uh, vanilla computer, and I forget if Vienna is automated at this point. It may actually speed through all this for us, but I want to say that it may ask us for at least like our name and that sort of thing. But again, it's been a little while since I've installed XP Vienna, so I don't I don't really know what to expect to be honest. I mean, I kind of know what to expect. Like I know what the whole uh, OS is about, but. As far as what happens during this phase, it's been like, I want to say, four or five months since I uh, took a look at it, maybe even more than that. So we're at 39 minutes on the Vienna computer and 34 minutes on the vanilla computer. And once again, I'm just going to go ahead and pause the video here and I will talk to you guys once we are at the next phase of the setup. All right, we are back and you can see that we've got a couple of things going on here. So the computer on the left has finished its... Uh, setup phase and now it's actually going to go through the out-of-box experience we'll go ahead and just press ok here and um 
press OK once again for it to actually launch into that. And the Vienna computer, it does not ask you for any user input. It's gone through and it's set up a user account all automatically by itself, which is pretty awesome. So we're going to go ahead and just go through this set up here on the computer on the left here and the first thing I'm gonna do on this computer is get XP service pack 3 because this is already way outdated um, XP in general is way outdated but XP service pack 1 is is even more outdated than uh, you know regular XP or uh, XP service pack 3 which is what most people that use XP I would imagine uh, they have so since I used this official uh, Dell OEM CD here. Let me just show you what that looks like again. This actually came from a Dell Dimension 8400, so it didn't even come from this computer. But because it's a Dell um, CD, it number one didn't ask me for any product key. It's already activated, which is super nice. And it also adds this uh, shortcut to the Dell Solution Center. And when I go into properties, or not those properties, but the computer properties, let me go ahead and just do that here. Go into properties um, maybe not okay I, I thought it was going to display like the Dell logo and all of that here in the meantime while we're still waiting for this one to boot up I'm gonna go ahead and actually get this computer on the network so that I can copy some files over from my computer so let me go ahead and pull out a network adapter here and I'm going to go ahead and oh crap well I just unplugged it that's not what I wanted to do so while we're waiting for the Vienna computer to actually finish installing, I'm actually going to go ahead and grab a little USB flash drive here, and we're going to, I mean, you can't really see what I'm doing here, but I'm just going on to my host computer, and uh, I'm going to actually copy over a XP Service Pack 3 installation or a uh, update file. All right, so we've got Service Pack 3 on this USB drive. I'm going to go ahead and reach over here and uh, plug that in should uh, already have a driver for a USB flash drive you can see it's got yeah safely remove hardware go ahead and go into my computer and there we go so we'll go ahead and run this file let me actually move this computer let me actually just go ahead and zoom in on this one since there's not really anything happening on uh, on the uh, Vienna computer. There you go, so you can kind of see everything a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get Service Pack 3 installed, then I'm going to probably install, I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna do this all on camera, but basically what I'm gonna do is get a, a network driver installed and get this machine fully up to date with all of the proper drivers and all of the proper uh, you know, security patches and all that good stuff. Um, we're still waiting for XP Vienna. Uh, it is at four minutes. Um, but it has not, like I said, asked me for any user input. So it is very nice that it does all of that uh, automatically and it doesn't freeze and like bring the setup to a halt uh, before you enter like your name, like a uh, regular XP does. All right, so we'll go ahead and pan over to the Vienna computer because you can see we got some stuff going on here. Let me just kind of rearrange the setup here so you can see everything a little bit better. So you see we got that Windows Vista cursor, pretty nice. Uh, and this should boot into that automated sequence where it actually installs all of the extra programs and everything. So it looks like we've got an out-of-box experience here. We'll go ahead and click OK. And here we go with the uh, automated installer. So we got um, this phase where it just basically goes through and it automatically installs a ton of software. So you see that we had Rocket Dock there that came up in that command line window. Um, so this is actually, you know, this can be a, a pretty cool. Some of the uh, uh, developers of these will, you know, use programs that will actually move the mouse around automatically. And there goes autofocus. See, this is what is so annoying. Looks like it's reset or it is actually rebooting. Okay. Hopefully one last reboot and then we'll be at the desktop. And there we go. So XP Vienna Edition has been successfully installed. Uh, with all those extra programs. So yeah, this one did have, oh yeah, tr uh, True Transparency, Y Shadow, and this whole menu here. I do remember this, and actually this is this is running actually pretty well. You can see we've got some Aeroglass-like transparency going on. Man, there's so much stuff in this. <laughs> Look at this, we got like desktop gadgets, so maybe I could install Vista on this. I mean, this is actually doing a pretty decent job at 
I mean, you see we got not a whole lot of lag going on. Of course, we haven't really run any of these programs yet. Um, we, but we got that side menu. My computer will go ahead and launch that one. Uh, going to the C drive here, Windows. Um, actually, let's just, I actually want to see how big the hard drive is. So go ahead and go to properties. So this is a 108 gig or a 111 gig hard drive. It's, there's a 108 gigs of space free. So XP Vienna used 3.2 gigs. Let's see how much regular XP Home Edition used because I did want to make this comparison eventually. So go ahead and check this out here. XP Home Edition actually used more space than XP Vienna. That's insane. How is that even possible? That doesn't even make any sense. There's less stuff installed on oh maybe because it's a maybe because it's a Dell DVD. There there might be some extra drivers or, or, or something like that. But still, that is that is crazy that this person was able to, you know, whoever made this was able to like I mean compress everything. To a point where even with installing all of these extra programs, I mean, Vienna Navigator, Windows 7 Dock, um, I mean, let me look at this. There's not as much stuff in here. This is not as uh, bloated as some of the other ones like XP Gold. XP Gold is like the, um, is, there's, there was just so much stuff installed. If you guys saw that video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There was a ton of stuff installed in uh, XP Gold, but XP Vienna was not as bloated as XP Gold, which was nice. It, it just kind of contained some actually useful system tools like you know, things you may actually want to use, you know, Core Temp, uh, Hardware Monitor, File Menu Tools, um, Resource Hacker, I actually didn't even know that was in here. Um, that is cool. So yeah, that is insane. That is like crazy that XP Vienna is actually taking up less space on the hard drive currently than uh, vanilla XP service pack one I think this is service pack three go ahead and confirm that oh whoops I do not want to rename the hard drive let's do win ver I gotta reach all the way across my desk so yeah it is service pack three you can see right there so um, that may also have something to do with it yeah guys I mean there you have it that is essentially a brief uh, demonstration I guess of actually installing or reinstalling windows rather on both of these computers so look at that we're actually done with service pack 3 we'll go ahead and hit finish here um probably just going to go ahead and uh, end the video off here because most of the other stuff that i got to do is just you know driver uh, installation which can get very uh, mundane after a while so um, I just want to thank you guys uh, so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever I upload new videos, which I do every single week on this channel. And be sure to drop me a comment letting me know your thoughts on this video, on this whole process. Is this something that you guys want to see more of? And also be sure to let me know if you guys want to see that MacBook video, as I definitely have some plans to uh, do that. Or just any other, you know, feedback, uh, general video suggestions that you guys have. I always enjoy reading what you guys have to say. And as always, I just want to thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.